So you've decided to use Anki for your preparation. You've chosen a pre-made deck out of the available options. But once you finish the deck and start giving GTs, you will have to make your own cards. This guide is for you and it will cover the basics of what differentiates a good card from a bad one and give you tools to implement these principles while making your own cards. First of all, you can't copy text from most QBanks. You need to use Windows Power Toys to bypass that restriction. I've made a detailed tutorial about that. Link is in the description. I want you to look at these two cards and guess which one do you expect to remember better while taking lesser time. The answer is simple. The second one, as the information is so condensed. So, the first and foremost thing is that a flashcard should be concise. That is the whole point of doing Anki. You cannot memorize entire essay type questions, just high yield facts and concepts. Secondly, the content of the flashcard should also contain the general concept, not just the specific fact asked in an MCQ. For example, look at this question. Right-sided hemiparesis and hemisensory loss of leg, foot, with inability to identify objects, apathy and personality changes, which artery is occluded? The answer is anterior cerebral artery. It's not enough to just memorize this specific fact. We should also know the context. Out of all these symptoms, which one helped us in making this diagnosis? And what about other arteries? Like if legs are more affected, it's ACS stroke. Face and arm more affected, MCS stroke. Visual deficit, PCS stroke. And brainstem signs, vertebro bacillus stroke. Now that you know the two principles that make a flashcard more effective, it's time to go into the actual workflow to extract a concise and conceptual flashcard out of the paragraphs of explanation given in the QBanks. For this, we need three tools, which are SumX, GenX and SumQ. Let's start with the first. This is the question from the earlier example. In order to create a concise version of this, I'll just copy it, put this in chat GPT and write SumX and hit enter. And here's the concise version. This won't work for you yet. To make this work, copy the first prompt I've given in the description, which basically tells ChatGPT to update its memory so that whenever I write some X, it follows all these detailed instructions. ChatGPT will update its memory and now it will work for you as well. You won't have to tell ChatGPT every time you want an aggressive summary. Coming to Gen X, basically we want ChatGPT to tell us all the general concepts behind a question. Copy the second prompt and paste it into your chat GPT to have it work for you. Now the last one, some Q. In certain situations, you will need to put an entire question in your card. But you need a summarized version of it. When you use some X for that, chat GPT starts answering the question. Paste the third prompt in your chat GPT. And now it will summarize the question without answering. You can use this to make a shorter flashcard, which includes just the important points. So these were some tricks I learned months after making my own cards. This will save you a lot of time while making cards and even while reviewing them. Thanks a lot for watching and let me know if you have any other doubts.